Hey, I'm Mike from Metro Boost, and I got another commentary. We're doing filming two at the same time. Whoa! Uh, just finished doing the Spider-Man one on the N64 review for Spider-Man, my little holiday special. And now I'm going to go through Jaws, which was uh, the most recent one as of the time of filming this commentary. Uh, if you haven't seen, you know, the videos, if you check them out, what's the point of getting behind-the-scenes knowledge if you haven't even seen the video itself? Uh, so we're going to go through the Jaws Unleashed review today. Um, this was a very troublesome production, I won't lie. So we'll go through it as the video goes on. Uh, but I'm very happy with how it came out, considering the obstacles. So let's get into it. Or not. Misfire. <laughs> what did I hit spacebar for? All right, come on. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Still recording? Still recording? Yeah, okay. That space bar went nowhere. Um, all right, Jaws. <laughs> um, okay, so this was uh, all... This whole thing... So I'm a big fan of Jaws. I really am. It's one of my favorite movies ever. So this whole thing is basically a reenactment of the scene from the first Jaws movie where Quint first thinks he hooks the shark... And Hooper disagrees and says, I think it's a game of fish, and they get a little argument. That's what this whole thing is. Now, the humorous side of it would be, like, that I'm using a, a, a bucket to fish with, and despite that fact, the line gets, like, ripped out super fast and all kinds of stuff. Um, <laughs> um, and then you have, like, other me on set there. I'm wearing a fedora and have glasses on. Ergo, it's a different person. <laughs> Um, so to film this, you know, the line is really taut right now. So I had help. Um, uh, my parents is always helping me out filming. So again, during like pandemic times, not having people come over for extended periods of time. So immediate family helping me out. So someone's pulling on the line right now to make it taut so that I can like fight the line and we can simulate it being actually having to be reeled in and stuff. Um, the fishing line itself was pretty much broken, though. Like, it doesn't really work all that well. Um, it can't cast. It's like I could never cast it. But if you pulled it out, it'd be fine. But then the line breaks, and it's just like the movie. Uh, Stingray. Don't you ever tell me my business again. And then it's the game. I caught it. <laughs> uh, I just finished editing a new opening. It's probably the best one... Uh, best one yet i like it a lot uh it'll be in the, the next few reviews it could be it could become it could become a relatively permanent thing because these are always changing um whenever i film a new episode i try to insert relevant clips or wherever i can so the new one's probably gonna be here to stay um oh, good times game collection that's all that's all moved i keep using that one clip i gotta film new ones there we go. So coming off of the Spider-Man video, the game collection back there is looking a lot more full. <laughs> I have acquired a lot more, but also just, like, organized them differently. And once again, this NASA shirt. <laughs> so I had the NASA shirt on in, like, a bunch of the recent Smart Home videos. And I also had it on in the Spider-Man video under, the ho under that goofy holiday shirt. There it is again. It's not on purpose. It's, like, completely by accident. Uh, it just, like, happens to be the shirt that I grab. I don't put much thought into the clothes that I wear besides, like, the sweater, which is, like, my costume. But, uh, sh oh, man. Uh, worth noting, if you look in the back and see the PS2 section back there, you'll notice a small gap because Jaws Unleashed is not there because we're playing it. Details. <laughs> um, okay, so this this is worth explaining, too. So, like, no one except for, like, my friends are going to get this joke. Uh, so, I worked at GameStop in a previous life. And there was a period of time where Mike was a little bit of a hipster. And I had, like, black jeans and, a, like, a purple sweater. And uh, I would wear a fedora. Not that fedora. It was, like, a black one. I think it was really more of a trilby. Uh, whatever you want to call it. 
Um, and like that was my look for a little while, but no one liked it. Everyone kept being like, "You gotta stop wearing the hat. Like you can't, you can't be doing it." So I got bullied out of wearing, wearing the hat, uh, <laughs> which is where like this comes from. Um, while we have it paused, gaze upon the glory of such awesome collectibles like the Lord of the Rings 4K collection, Super Metroid, uh, the collector's edition for Aliens Colonial Marines. Uh, yeah, that one hit really hard. Uh, I have tears, eye drops. Oh, uh, look, Colonial Marines again. <laughs> I'm really hoping that people notice that. I mean, having to point it out that I have stupid Colonial Marines uh, poster here. Um, that's the new spot for all the cartridge games. They used to be in that shelving. Now they have like their own little section so that I can expand that more over time. I don't buy as many cartridge games as I do buy disc games, but uh, that's their new home. Shack Fu. So there, that's the. I filmed this later. Um, I realized that, like, I mentioned the other me by saying that he's from the dimension of no Fedo of Fedora acceptance, but there was nothing else. I realized, you know, I should give, like, some kind of, like, closure or something to that character, so I just have him steal from me, and then he rolls away <laughs> to, like, explain his absence from later in the episode. <laughs> Oh, man, there was all... Okay, so this is where we get into, like, it being tough. So, the reason that this episode was tough, I had to redo all of the scenes on the couch, like, three times. So, I filmed it initially, and then I filmed it again, which is normal, because you do multiple takes, and you want to make sure everything's covered, right? But the second time I did it, which is when I liked most of those clips... Something was wrong with the audio, and there was, like, no audio from any of it. And I got, like, super frustrated, and I was like, no, I filmed for, like, three hours and all these takes and all this stuff, and it was a, it was a waste. So then I just kind of put it on the back burner for a while, and then... Because it's been... The last review I did was January, right? It was the Hot Wheels one, and this came out, like, late May. <laughs> it's, like, three months. Normally these are, like, two weeks apart, like, at least they used to be. Um, I want to put more work into each one, so it's it's not going to be out of the ordinary for them to be a month or two apart. But like, I had two problems. So like, I got I got like really frustrated with it because of technical problems, and then I got a haircut, and my hair is a little bit longer in this video than it normally is. So I was like, oh well, I can't just like refilm it now with like short hair, and like when I get haircuts, I just I'm lazy. I just <laughs> Um, so, like, I can't go from, like, this kind of hair to, like, super short. Like, I have to, that, and then I have to redo more than just this. That would, that would mean redoing the outdoor scenes and, like, other stuff, too, that I already did. So I was like, you know what, let's just, like, pause, and I'll come back to this when my hair grows back. And, or, like, I debated just throwing it away entirely. Um, so it was, it was rough. So, like, then I came back to it and, like, redid the live scenes multiple more times. Like, two more times, again, which is normal. But, like, to restart the whole thing from the ground up like that, like, so many times was, like, very tough to, like, deal with. Because then I'm, like, having this debate in my head, like, is it going to even be worth it? Like, why even try? It's not even that good. Whatever. Um, so, man, it was tough. But there was there were a lot of positives. So coming back to it was good because I was able to really put new energy into when I came back to it to finish it. Um, additionally, it's one of the first videos that like I wrote an actual like script for. Um, well, not so much a script, more like a screenplay. Um, not that I'd followed it, but it was like really helpful to like map out the whole thing. It led to these live action sequences on the couch being much more energetic. Um, and also more focused. It's definitely the best video in terms of being concise. Because everything I say on camera has a point. And, like, very few of these live-action takes are more than, like, say, a minute to two minutes long. Which is pretty unusual for past stuff. Whereas a lot of my live-action takes in, say, like, the Spider-Man video... <laughs> ...were four minutes. Um, okay. So, I thought of this during the editing process... I was editing the video, and it's like two days before it went up on YouTube. 
And I was like, this stupid Jaws theme, like, I'm not much, I'm not, like, going to rely on, like, dirty humor or lowbrow humor, but, like, it really does sound bad. And it sounds like farts. Someone do a little <laughs> in front of the camera. <laughs> um, I actually filmed a number of different little butt moves, which I will now subject you to. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I filmed a number of them, but only ended up using one. It just repeats, and the angle changes. Uh, it's just a re it's just f swiveled uh, to be the opposite side. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is really puzzling. They got music from the movies, like the final battle theme, but they couldn't get the actual shark theme, as I think it's called. I think it's called the shark theme. Um, they couldn't get like the main thing. Like you wouldn't play a Star Wars game licensed and made by Lucas Arts. Um, and like the opening text crawl is like not the Star Wars theme, but then everything else is from the movie. That'd be so weird, right? So that's what, that's what's happening here. It's this crappy off-brand version of the theme. Um, this game is so weird. So it it's like super dark and like really really ugly in terms of like you're tearing people limb from limb just because you're the shark so it's like really violent and people get like dismembered and arms and legs are flying everywhere like it's so disturbing in some ways on the flip side it is like a genuine over the top just fever dream of crazy ideas and like you can you can get into it like it's it's such dumb you gotta be like really self aware about it but like you you can laugh you can laugh a little bit with it um, it's one of those like so bad it's good kind of scenarios but after you get like more than like two hours in it it genuinely is bad this footage comes from my Retron Five because I can't use my actual Genesis to get capture footage with Retro Tank I need a certain cable to do that with. Um, like component or otherwise something like that to to do it with because if i don't it'll come out false color and be all messed up uh so that echo the dolphin footage was from my retron 5 because i did find out during the research gathering stage of the review that the same people that made echo the dolphin made this killer shark game where you get to kill dolphins what a turn <laughs> and this was their last game too uh, they actually went uh, belly up after this. Um, not the, I, I think I think everyone did. Not well, actually no, not the publisher. So Majesco was the publisher. They they went on for they might still be around. I'm not sure, but Appaloosa, whatever interactive, they went down after this. Um, unfortunate because this game is like like I said, dumb fun. Tear them apart. Uh, from a technical perspective, half of this game is kind of like recorded with RetroTink, and the half of it's not. So footage like this, it's hard to tell because I used Component on the other stuff. Um, at least some of it was Component. It's, it's a mixture. So it's like <laughs> there's there's the first footage I filmed would have been composite, going directly. I still have it sitting here from the last video I talked about it, going right into the StarTech capture card. Uh, composite going into or no component going into this uh, at some point I think I did composite too um, I know I did uh, and then I redid the first hour or so of the game with retro tank I did that when I came back to finish this review because I didn't have retro tank when I first started this capture footage which was way back like I was working on this as I was working on the Hot Wheels video. So we're talking like January is like when this started. Which at the time of this video coming out, it's now June. So five whatever months ago is when I started this. Um, <laughs> the tail finisher thing. Uh, it's so dumb. So that would, that would have been like component or composite back then. It's a mixture of one or the other. And then, so this is, uh, and then I would have switched it to uh, retro tank for the first hour or so um, pretty much starting at the point where you fight the whale is where it no longer is retro tank everything going forward 
is captured using a retro tink device in terms of retro stuff though because they are super cool and i'm so glad i learned about those because it really does bring out a lot of uh better performance out of your consoles um, i didn't tell you about the story much there's not much of a story in this game like it's just like like that scientist guy appears again a couple times it's just like they have like these new uh, sea research things that are in the water and like they're making the sharks hyper aggressive so like Jaws the shark is like summoned by that I think so the rampage is because of all that and they're like no it's not causing a problem but it is uh, but there's like cutscenes where it's like oh we're gonna we'll get the shark don't worry summon the uh big boat and then you blow up the boat oh no he blew up the big boat oh no like there's just not much happening there are very few cutscenes that have like people talking to each other uh, it's pretty rare i didn't finish the game i quit right where this review ends because i just couldn't take it anymore um uh, it, this game just drones over you so bad after a certain point that it's just not fun anymore. Um, I couldn't figure this part out right away. I had to look it up. <laughs> You're supposed to like grab him and hold him and 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 use the key card scanner. Like what? <laughs> Thought I was playing a Jaws game, not Doom. Why am I messing around with key cards? Like, oh, it's crazy. Um, okay, so that's com that's component footage right there, for sure. Uh, you can tell because of, like, the little line effects that are happening. Um, so I played it, and then when I was when I was filming the first batch of, of review footage, I realized, you know what? I'm being unfair. I could potentially be being unfair. Because I remember that you actually have this, like, shark vision feature... So I'm complaining about how you can't tell that these surfaces are breakable. But then it hit me. What if you can tell and I just wasn't using the shark vision thing? So when I played it again with Retro Tank, I made an effort to turn on shark vision here and there. And no, you can't tell. You, there's no way to tell. Like, it's a waste. Shark vision only highlights, like, targets. Like, like people and, like, fish and stuff to eat. <laughs> what a waste. I like that guy. <laughs> Don't start running right away. You wouldn't want to get out of there too fast. Uh, oh boy, here it comes. You gotta fight the fight the whale. When I originally filmed this, I made a point to talk about Shamu the whale, because um, I was like, well, it's a giant, it's a giant whale in an attraction. Naturally, you think of famous creatures like that, and I had this whole whole discussion planned about how uh like the the whale like attacked people and stuff but then i did my homework on it before filming i was like ah like it's not it's not only really funny a eh? and like also only really accurate like i don't uh, it wasn't worth going into uh but yeah <laughs> so at one point i was i was labeling this jaws versus shamu but then i changed it after doing some research <clears throat> it does take way too long. So, like, this whole... Like, look how big the health bar is compared to how much damage you do. Like, it's crazy. Um, it, it sucks. Uh, it's not fun. This is the first time where the game is, like, hitting you with that mediocrity. Like, oh, no. Um, you can only attack him on the rear end. Uh, and he only goes in a set path. He'll only divert from his path if you get in front of him. Oh, boy. <laughs> Alright, so... Take it all in. <laughs> so, this is probably one of the most sophisticated things I've done for the show yet. Uh, this whole thing here cost a good bit of money for me. Um, that's a bed sheet that I painted, if you can't tell. Uh, and then that's a whole little costume. So... This is like a splash zone thing. This was the first thing that I filmed. I knew the moment that I played this game and that whale gets torn in half on screen, I was like, dude, like, you know, these amusement parks are famous for having the splash zone. So it's like, uh-oh, don't want to be in that splash zone. So then 
I get pelted by actual raw meat and a bucket of lukewarm water. And it's kind of cold outside, by the way, because, again, this is like, I think this was like early March that this was filmed. Um, and it's not exactly warm here uh, where I am this time of year. I, it, get, it can go up and down. So it's, it's cold, and I'm getting belted with water, and that's real raw meat. Uh, and that was the second take. <laughs> so, like, that wasn't the first time. So I was already wet and miserable, and we're doing it twice just for coverage. Uh, <laughs> so it's like big pieces of meat. Uh, those clothes were destroyed, and I smelled terrible, and it was awful. Um, and the reason that it's cropped like this is because the bed sheet wasn't big enough to take over the whole shot. So originally it's just black, like I just cropped black bars. Uh, but then I was like, you know, I could just put it on like the background of the game and it, it's fine. Um, but yeah, it wasn't filmed with a cell phone or anything. It was the regular camera that I always use, but. Oh my god, that was freaking perfect. I, oh that <laughs> I really wish that some of them would have stayed on me. <laughs> oh my god. I think that turned out pretty good. I wonder how I got this one right here. This is because of how it worked out. Because I was outside, you could see the trees and everything. Um, <laughs> when it was really filled. <sighs> and then we get the really confusing part. So they go into like... Oh yeah, it's fine. The threat is uh, highly exaggerated. Like, come on. Um, it's it's just bizarre. To like, I get why it's there because the whole like authority figure doesn't believe in the monster thing is such a famous cliche that gets imitated countless times. The Jaws made famous. Like, you, you gotta have it. You gotta have the non-believing authority figure. But it's like, at some point, you can't really... Like, like, look at this. The shark is, like, flying through the air, destroys a stone bridge, floods this whole section. Like, it's unbelievable, like, how much damage it does just in the eyes of the... Like, there's hundreds of people there. It tears the whale in half. Like, like, come on. What are you trying to do right now? <laughs> it's worth mentioning that, uh, you know, Jaws is based off of a book. Uh, the book has a lot of differences versus the movie. Uh, one of the differences being why the mayor is so uh, against the idea of the Great White being there. It's because he's in deep with the mob. <laughs> there's, like, there's like a mafia that has some kind of real estate scandal going on and like they don't want the property values to go down that's why he's like extra against not closing the beaches <laughs> versus the movie where it's just like i don't want to do that because the economy will suffer um <laughs> uh i didn't talk about it um but just to pause it here that tank breaking open right there there are piranha in there and when you come to swim through this area they will kill you like stupid fast if they get close to you uh, it's one of the first times that you really experience like multiple deaths in a row if you don't understand what's happening because there they are coming toward you can eat them uh you can like muscle your way through them by eating them but i didn't even know they were there the first time i played the game it was only when i played it again uh and capturing the footage a second time that i was like what is killing me here and then i was like oh it's piranha what the hell uh <laughs> so, worth mentioning. Yeah, this stuff gets, like, crazy boring <clears throat> super fast. Like, the open world part, I didn't talk about too much either. Uh, it's divided into four like, quadrants, south, north, east, and west. Uh, caught him out of the air! Uh, and... You can roam around and just, like, freely attack people, like, get used to the controls, try your new moves out, etc. Um, 
it kind of has like a, I think it kind of has like a GTA style cop response thing. Like the more chaos you cause, the more you see police boats, if I remember correctly. Like that definitely happened at one point when I was playing it. Um, it isn't like track, I, I don't recall like a wanted level necessarily, but like there, there were like police boats and stuff. Um, but the open world only exists for two reasons. To, to travel to the next destination and then to to do side missions. And the side missions that I tried were all the same. It was just kill the people as fast as you can. Like, kill these lifeguards. Do it. Uh, so it's just, there's not much to do. And it's also kind of annoying because, like, you'll be, you'll be traveling in the open world. And then the game is like, did you want to read you this mission? And you're like, no, I don't want to read you that one. And then, like, it has to load for a minute. It's like, it's, it's a little frustrating. Alright. Okay, so this is a pretty simple effect, although it took a little while. So this is footage from the first Metal Gear Solid game, obviously. Uh, and what I did was I just created a black shape and I just blacked out the bottom part of it where the dialogue would normally appear. So that's covered up. And then Solid Snake himself is also covered up. And then I played the game and tried to get like uh, the closest thing I could get to a profile picture of the shark's face, and it's him like ah! Uh, and then I just I just recorded the lines and I had like a little radio effect. Uh, as simple as it is, I will say I managed to only have the words on screen when Colonel Campbell is actually talking. Points to me. <laughs> um, simple but effective. <laughs> it's one of the first cutaway gags I've ever done for the show. Uh, that's the benefit to it taking so long to make, though, is that you get nice things like that. Oh, excuse me. Oh, that I just haven't done before, really. Uh, so that's cool. This level sucks. So, like, you're, you, you have to go to the towers and, like, destroy the little security turrets... And then you just bring the torpedoes back and forth. Hit them all three times. After this, and I talk about it in a previous version. So, like, again, like, I refilmed it, like, three times. Remember that? So, in one of the previous times, I actually go into it. But there's, like, a part where you go into this, like, power generator thing. And, like, you go into this power generator and you have to destroy that, too. Like, it's just weird to me how the game just, like, totally takes a U-turn into just blowing stuff up. I also totally skipped, I think, uh, I didn't even show it or talk about it, but the first, the first mission involving barrels is actually before that toxic barge. You have to grab a barrel that's being thrown from this truck, and you grab the barrel and you throw it in a little drain pipe, and that's all you have to do. If you know what you're doing, that mission is like, not even five minutes. Um, hit it with the barrels. Barrels, 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 barrels. Barrels. Yeah, because there's the, the factory on the island. You blow that up. Toxic barge. Oof. This level, I didn't talk about the first part of it. When you initially arrive in this level, you actually have to go through like a little minefield. Uh, and it kind of reminds me of like the Finding Nemo scene with all of those naval mines. Um, and like you'll get an instant game over if you hit them in that park. But if you have enough health... You can survive getting hit by one of the individual mines, but if you're by multiple, you're dead. But so this is the last mission that I did. Um, crazy frustrating. Uh, super boring. You're supposed to hunt these guys down and you, you just kill them. Some of them are relatively easy to get to. Some of them you have to like scare. That took me a while to figure out because I was like, how do I get this guy that's in here? And then you have to scare him. Like, like, what is going on with that? Look how fast he is, too. Yeah, it's like you go from playing Dynasty Warriors, like, just, you know, simple, press the buttons, do cool things. You go from Dynasty Warriors to XCOM. Like, there was a serious shift in, like, how you want me to do things. Because you just muscle your way through everything else like a barbarian with no resistance. Just 
tear people apart. They're always out in the open, hit them out of their boats, throw the barrels. And then it goes from that to, all right, now you got to solve puzzles. <laughs> like, you suck. This is where I get stuck. So this is real. Um, it's coming. Yeah, the guy wouldn't move. That's why I got stuck, is because he wasn't moving. I'm like hitting, trying to trying to scare him, and he wouldn't move. Because you can see him on the red, he's the red dot on the radar, so you can like see him like not moving. Super frustrating, he's supposed to keep going. Uh, but then I get stuck. So I actually did get free of this. It took a long time, but I was able to unwedge the shark. Uh, but like, man, like, uh, what a perfect place to end though. Like, I feel like that gave me the perfect out to end the review. Cause it's just like, it's boring. I'm not having fun anymore. Perfect exit. <laughs> the shark getting stuck into and like psychotic corkscrews. You can hear him screaming, too, the, the diver guy. He's still right there. He's supposed to go all the way out. What a piece of crap. Uh, I talked about it in a previous take, also. Um, the greatest hits thing. I think it's GameSpot. I couldn't... I found this information, and then I couldn't find it again to verify it. Uh, but I want to say it was GameSpot, but they gave this game a uh, the best... No, the worst game that everyone played for the year it came out. Because, you know, it's not a good game for many reasons. Not just because the gameplay itself devolves because it's mediocre. But it's just like, it's just bad. <laughs> but, like, it sold really good. Because Greatest Hits is, like, more than a million, I think. Um... The NES game also captured from Retron. Uh, I mean, you may get some. Like, uh, it's just such a weird case because that first couple of hours really is like goofy, over the top, stupid fun. You, you get some friends together, you'll have some laughs. Like, it's true. That, you definitely will have some laughs in the first couple hours. It's just so over the top. Oh, man. Which, yeah, I fell for it too. You know, you'll laugh at it for the first hour or so, but after that, I really can't guarantee you're going to have much fun with it in, in actuality. It just becomes a pretty boring mess. You could just say that it sank. I'll be here all week. Tips appreciated. Thank you for joining me today. <laughs> Puns. Thanks for watching. <laughs> sure to subscribe if you like it too. It's the best way to support me. Thanks. Other stuff too. Other content. Smart home. Gaming enhancement. Puns. Dum -dum. <laughs> Have a good day. It's much more concise than the original version. Oh boy. There we go. Another review. Conquered with commentary. Uh, definitely took a while, but that one was worth the wait. It was, I liked that one a lot. Uh, good times. <clears throat> the next one is in the planning stages. Uh, but, um, the, the benefit to it taking so long is that there was a lot going on, uh, with the video. So, I, I, at one point I was belting them out like one every two weeks, but they, I just, they just weren't very special. Like, I don't. The Gex and the Godzilla save the Earth and stuff like that—they're just, they're, you know, they're they're just not. Eh. They do a good job, like doing justice to the game and whatnot, but there's nothing else. There's no like fun bits and cutaways and stuff like that. So the benefit of that taking so long to make is that there's a lot going on in it. So that's cool. Um, fun video. I'm so glad to have that game out of my life because, like I said, you know, I did capture for it early on, as early as January, 
And then I did capture for it, like, again with Retro Tank? Like, God. It's not fun. <laughs> uh, but hey, that's the end of this one. So thanks for checking out the commentary video on this. Um, like I said before, if you haven't seen the actual video itself, you know, hey, check it out. Um, but uh, thank you for joining me, and I hope you found this interesting. Got to see some cool things, hear some cool things. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your day.